Live on the scene in Carson, California, at this uh, exhibit. Repurposed military fashion and photography honoring veterans. Uh -huh. And what is this lovely couple's name? I'm Nikita. And I'm Donovan Harris, husband and wife duo. <laughs> yes, and, yes. and what do we have going on here today? Okay. What's the purpose of this exhibit? So we decided to collaborate on a piece when we found out we had access to this gallery. Uh -huh. He does repurpose military fashion. Yeah. And since I do photography, I thought I would take portrait photography of some local veterans to tie in the like military theme. And then we just kind of started from there and it just turned into, turned into this, into telling this. the stories through his background and their backgrounds and putting it all together. Yeah, and myself, I'm a military, military kid, so um, I had a friend whose father had PTSD, so growing up, I just wanted to tell that story through my fashion, uh, repurposed military fashion or upcycle, whatever you want to call it. So you will see on some pieces I have, uh, I have the title, which represents courage. Um, I have the 7173 is my, bro my, my, my brother's birth year, my birth year. And then you'll notice my brand is rod and repeat. So this represents the brand here. And then we represent the military paying homage with the uh, camel uh, colored uh, state flag, the, um, the country flag. And then all of his branding have, is on um, some military dog tags for all of his pieces. And they each have a different story. So we call that one like the Coachella piece. Um, he loves 70s, 70s vibes. And then that's like cut up Letterman jacket. If my school is. And then he has some red tail stuff from, from the back for oh, Vietnam. Right yeah. And then my uh, photography, I wanted to create kind of a line shadow down the middle of the faces. Um, the dark side representing the war and the PTSD and, and kind of all the stuff that they're struggling with coming back to America. Yeah. And then the light side is kind of what they show us and what we see because we don't know what's really going on behind closed doors. Right. And it's how they kind of living both of those lives simultaneously on a daily basis. So why did you feel the need to go into this aspect, the, the veteran aspect, instead of anything else in the world you could have done creatively? Well, I mean, I'm a big believer in advocacy. Um, I myself have type 1 diabetes, so yeah. I have to advocate for myself in health, and, and he's been my advocate as a T3. As a T3, you know, T3 is like a caregiver. caregiver. So any any time that we have an opportunity through art to create discussion, create, yeah. you know, awareness about some stuff that, like a lot of the things we had on the panel that they mentioned, yeah. a lot of people don't just assume that kind of stuff related to military. So that. being an interactive piece, um, just shedding light on what it's really like coming back, being a veteran. So you're giving a... Uh love and exposure back to s something that you feel is ignored, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, the kind of glamorized, the, the media, yeah, yeah. glamorization so, of... The, the veterans who want to be vulnerable and share their testimony, yeah. um, we welcome them into the space to share with the audience, and it, it really does people like opening it does. Um, yeah. to hear even how they feel coming back, if they feel accepted, if you know they went out and sacrificed and, you know, the thoughts of I might not be coming back home to my family right. and then to come back here and you know during 2020 and stuff yeah. and it just makes you give <laughs> you it, 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 just, it just gives you another look on what they've uh, not only achieved but what they went through mm -hmm. so you can have a little more appreciation of just someone said oh I, I did a tour here you know and you can just kind of spread a little more love and kind of yeah. be a little more generous and they're all they're all thriving. I mean, he, yeah. he started his own dream academy. Yeah. He's a, a chiropractor. He's a sculptor. Um, the guy in the back owns his own barbershop and him it. One like, in the area. yeah. So they're they're utilizing what they've been given and learned um, to yeah. give back. So they're giving back even after war. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man, for sure. And then I'll break down uh, why you only used uh, black and white. Paint okay. splatters on this okay, so on these pieces. On the, on most pieces, the, the white is in the middle, and the, the black, depending on, is more so on the sleeve. But I use the black and white more so because I wanted to show the life. Um, can sometimes be black and white in a retrospect of like the way things go, um, trial tribulation that people face. Um, sometimes it just be one one point uh, white or black, 
And then when you look at the distressing of it, distressing can break out of the black and white and everything's not just safe sometimes. Things happen out of your control. Um, and then I put, if, if you notice on some pieces, I put the, pat the denim patches in between the, the uh, holes, the distressing to show that if you keep on pushing, if you keep on thriving, then some things can come to full fruition. The hole can be patched through um, you just not giving up or believing. So believing that you can do whatever it is you're trying to do. And then for each piece, do you see the garment first or do you have a subject that you want to touch on? Like how does the creativity I, come I about? For me, I see the garment first. Um, I necessarily have a subject. I just see the garment. I see, um, depending on what format, like when I look at the Letterman jacket, I just looked at the jacket. I knew I had the, um, the military piece. Um, so it just matter about, now it's a matter about just putting those pieces together and meshing the right things with it. Because I, I didn't use everything from the jacket. The remnants, I just kind of just said, you know, I can't use it for this here. It just, it, it was a little too much. Yeah. For that one's like, a more structured jacket too. More structured, it's, yeah. like, it's more stern than some of the other ones are kind of like lightweight jackets. Yeah. So, so you have to hold. You can hold it, and, and, that, and that comes in with knowing different materials. What materials hold better? Uh, what materials don't hold better? So this, to me, this is one of my favorite pieces. That, uh, this is the Coachella piece, where you look at the whole piece. We're going for like a '70s vibe to it more so. So on this piece here, this is like a 1980s. Uh, it's a lightweight BDU called a shirt jacket, um, to a degree. And uh, what I did is I just basically wanted to take some denim. From pants and put on the sleeves, if you may notice, with zippers. And zippers kind of give it another design aesthetic, you know, kind of a more of an up to date feel. You like you see some of the remnants of denim coming through here. The black is not too prevalent on it, more of the white is prevalent. But I didn't want this, this I didn't want this more saturated. Like these, these are heavier jackets, so I feel like the more of the white gave it more of like a chunkier feel. And this is light, so I kind of gave it a lighter splatter to it. And then I just wanted to be live free because I wanted people to kind of, you know, just. Be free, get some, kind of get a little verbiage on the piece, you know, and the pants I uh, of course goes along with the Coachella piece or uh, Woodstock piece, if you want to say. But it's kind of like this kind of upscale cycle, those two, give it like a vintage feel, flare cut kind of setup. A little bit of denim, a little bit of paint splatter here to kind of, you know, not too much to over, overdo it, but just kind of get a little shower effect. The, the letter of the piece, like I said, it's, it's my high school football jacket. And it's just, it's just something I wanted to kind of give more of a sportier feel to the, uh, this is the M65 BDU jacket. It's more of a, a winter jacket, heel jacket, comes with a liner inside. Um, I just wanted to give it more of a sportier feel to uh, to this jacket. And, and a remnant of my high school, you know, kind of bring me into the picture. Uh, high school and just, you know, um, how far I've come, I want to say. So this is kind of more, more, this is more of a sentimental piece, I would say. More of me in this jacket, I would say, the pieces of me because my field jacket is my uh, high school uh, leather jacket. So, is this almost like a autobiography or self portrait of yourself it, in the it, garment? It, or? It, it, I was, it's in, to a degree high school wise. I would say high school wise. Just kind of up to that point, you know, the, the blend of, because most of my, I would say, from middle elementary, part of elementary, up through middle school through part of high school, ninth grade year was military. So that's why I kind of look at this was military uh, upbringing kid. So that's why I kind of look at this like, okay, the military high school, oh yeah, cool, you know. That's kind of, yeah, we kind of got fresh out. My mother, um, my father retired, like my freshman year, I think freshman year of high school. So it was kind of like that break over. So I just wanted to pay homage to that high school, you know, military kid. And what's the meaning behind the brand name, Rod and Repeat? Rod, 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 Rod is short for Rod my brother's middle name is Rod and uh, that's his middle name, and repeat is basically a name my uncle gave me because he said I copied everything he did, so it's Rod and Repeat. So every time he would see it, he would say, Rod, Repeat. So I was thinking Rod and Repeat, you know what I mean? So it's basically just behind, this is a name behind, it's a nickname for us, for my brother and I. Could you go into this piece? The... Oh yeah, this is the, uh, I call this the, uh, just a weekend cover off. It's like something that you wear over the weekend. Something I feel like you can just throw on, and once again, on this piece here, I just kind of, this one was kind of like more of the flow. At first, I didn't know what I really wanted to do with it, but then I just had some din dinner remnants. And like I said, once again, I had it, took the sleeves out and added some sleeve pant leg sleeves to it, give it a stress look. Then I took uh, pieces of uh, pant, like the, the loop, the belt buckle of the pants, and kind of put in there, cut out some pants and different remnant pieces. 
And uh, this is basically just something I felt like was a weekend, something you could just wear on the weekend, man, just kick it. And it's a flight suit, of course, it was like, I think, 70s, 70s, 80s, along with the or so. And this was like a, a bag I had, just kind of just to make it more artistic with it. Just kind of give it just another little flair to it. Have you worn this out on the town? No. No? I don't. I haven't worn any. The only one at first I was wearing was this one here. Was this one over here? This is the, mm -hmm. uh, this BDU jacket at first, but no, but no, no, it was just plain. No, no art. So anything here, I haven't worn with any. All the one I'm worn out of town was this one. That she's worn that one. Fly. Yeah, all made from the gallery. Yeah, sure, yeah. Right. Hey, it's a sticky area. Uh huh. Which is a, a group. It's a fight group back in the day. You know, I'm going to know the history behind it. I, I know a little yeah, history, but for the viewers that don't, yeah, if you could just drop a little they're, intro. They're basically, they're a group, uh, the Red Tails are a group of guy, African-American men. And basically what they would do at first, they were sent out first to fly out to hit to, to hit targets. I think at one point they weren't, they weren't, um, they were suspected to come back. But they came, all of them came back. So they were like, you know, the military was like, hey, no, we're going to need you guys to go out and fight. So they became like the, the head of it all uh, as far as our flight and, and, you know, going in and making successes, bombing and all that stuff. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I remember because of the back of the plane, they all. The back of the plane, the back of the plane, yeah, yeah, with red tail. So that's what they call them, some of the red tails. The Tuskegee Airmen, yeah. So I just want to be in this jacket, you know, I, this, this cover, I didn't do any distressing to. I just left an original as far as like the silhouette. I just added dead in pieces to it because I didn't want to distress it or kind of do any kind of uh, damage in that way to it. So I just kind of have like a little bit of denim here and there. And, you know, you see paint, paint splatters here. Only on the denim and then paint splatter of black on the garment. And then you see like once again, every, every piece pretty much has a dog tag. They get back again, the logo rider we need. And I have like a Buffalo soldier on there. He was soldiers, infantrymen back in the eight, back in the 1866 and the 1900s. They were like infantry soldiers in the army. So. Uh, Where do you see yourself going in the future? Or whole, do you see yourself sticking to this one type of? This type of repurpose? Yeah, I, 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 garment. At, the, at this moment in life, I see, it, I see sticking to this repurposed, uh, made to order type pieces. Because for me, it just says a little more. I feel like I can do a lot more with it. Um, I, I, I felt like I'm, in starting this, I never was like a um, brand, like when you're just trying to get pieces to sell quickly. I just try to make mass put the piece out. Every piece I feel like needs to be, needs to say something to me. Um, and then if someone, then once the piece is for sale at some point, it needs to say something to the person who's buying it. Um, so yeah, I, I, I've always seen repurpose being something I feel like in the future would be, you know, different items. On a bigger scale, of course, my wife and I traveling. Hope we being able to take this show and travel, the exhibit and travel with it um, as a collab would be phenomenal. So yeah, man, next couple of years we'll be looking at. Man. That's dope. And is this piece actually from the year this of Tuskegee? No, no, I don't know the year exactly, but I know it's from the 65, 1965. So I haven't done my homework as far as like exact. I don't want to say the whole thing. Uh -huh. But if it's exactly the year, but it's in the 60s. I think maybe, wow. yeah, so 60s, maybe maybe a little, it might fall a little more past or shorter, but it's in the 6965 vintage yeah. So I try to get vintage pieces. I try to get everything vintage, nothing like, nothing aftermarket, if I can help it, everything is original, someone is worn, you know what I mean? Just to give it a different feel, worn in, broken in feel, and it has a story behind it. Other than the story that I'm telling with it, somebody else has worn it, you know what I mean? I don't know the person who's worn it, but I know there's many stories that have come behind it. So that's, I think it makes it more brilliant as an art piece, you know, than just, just grabbing something going with it. Is it harder to get these vintage pieces or is it yeah, fairly times easy? It can be. In time, it can be. A lot of times you have to borrow with people because, you know, you never know what somebody's asking for a piece and you're trying to get it at a good rate. And so, yeah, it's like, it, it can be a little difficult in finding because a lot of people, you, you, have to do your, you have to do your homework and find out if the piece is authentic or if the piece is just something. You can kind of tell, I think I, I, I've gotten an eye on that. I can look at something and tell if it is off key. Because you can tell by some of the brands, like a lot of them, real military, they go with school ball zippers. Now, YKK is more of an upper brand zipper, but school ball is all of most of the military zippers. You know, it's like sturdy zippers, made to last, durable. Um, so, yeah, I kind of look at the stuff like that, man. You can kind of tell them the stitching. Yeah. The double stitching on that, a lot of their uh, pieces, so they come last being out in the field or whatever it may be. So. 
And what is the feedback uh, from the people in Carson? Because we're in Carson right now. What, how do the community love? The community loves it. I think the community has embraced it as something new and refreshing. Uh, you step in Carson. Yeah, oh yes, count, count, um, the councilman, uh, um, Jim Deere came, to check it out, check out the piece, which is phenomenal, man. Um, so yeah, he's a, he's a good friend, uh, the family, and um, yeah, they came to check it out, man. They just really, uh, and I think the city of Carson loved it, man. I think they enjoyed it. I think, you know, as we get it out, more and more and more people of Carson and other cities surrounding will be able to take into it and endure, you know, and see and hear our story, man. Be able to give back more to our veterans. Do you guys see yourself having another exhibit soon? I do. I'm, we're not sure where, but I do. <laughs> I think we do, man. How did you come in contact with the veterans uh, that were photographed here? A few, of them, a few of them I know. They're family members, and there's some I had to reach out on LinkedIn and different um, uh, social platforms to find a few. And then one of them, like I said, one of them, one of them girlfriends was formed with my wife. Uh, so we were able to get in contact through him, but most of the guys we know through family, and then, like I said, for two of them, uh, I contacted on social media platforms. You guys said earlier that you guys had some trouble that some didn't really want to explain their story or talk about certain things. Yeah, there's a few. Was that, that a, was that an obstacle, even getting them to agree to this? Not really. I think it just was the warm when my wife presented the fact of um, them having to come up during the uh, opening night. Uh, one of the guys just said he he opt out as far as like he's, um, disclosing any type of information, which is fine. But all of them agreed, like happy because they wanted to. It's telling their story, you know what I mean. It just kind of give it a uh, give people another look at what they deal with through life. So yeah, it was I don't think I don't think it was difficult in that matter as um, trying to get recruit veterans to do this project. Do either of you have a background in photography or or uh, fashion or? Did you guys jump in it head first and, and just? Well, no, no, we didn't. My, 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 for me, I, 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 I was playing with fashion. I just didn't know exactly which direction I wanted to go. But I feel like now, since we've collabed with this project, I feel like this is the way I'm to go. I feel like, uh, I don't know, I feel like God, in this sense, is kind of directing me in, that, in this way. And my wife, can yeah, explain I've done photography more. as a profession uh, since 2017. I'm an actress. And so I started off mostly doing headshot photography for actors and influencers and small business owners. Um, so this is my first uh, like portrait photography session, mm. uh, but I've been doing headshots and kind of more artistic, like artist album type um, shots since 2017. And on the photography, you you did it with the backdrop where you just, it's basically almost like a, a portrait of them. Why did you choose to do that instead yeah. of a backdrop of anything else? Well, I wanted, I know I wanted it dark because I knew I was trying to create shadows and things on their face, so I didn't really want any busyness behind them. Um, so as I set up the different sessions with the, um, with the vets, I kind of, since I'm an actor, I kind of took them through exercises so that through their eyes, it wouldn't be dead, like there would be something going on. So I had them kind of remember some stuff, closing their eyes. I took them through like some um, verbal verbal things for them to kind of draw up in memory and then had them open their eyes and then I just start shooting while well before, before like they start crying or something to get some real stuff going on in their eyes. So I wanted the viewer to see them like kind of looking straight through them and, and the viewer looking straight through, straight, straight through them. And then the shadows I told you before with the, the war versus what we see. What's next on the horizon for you two? Well, yeah, somebody came up to us uh, on Eventbrite and was saying that she'd been working with veterans for the past 15 years traveling the world and she's in Florida right now and she's like, do you guys go on tour with this? I'd love to bring you guys out. So we're gonna hop on a Zoom with her Ooh, um, wow. next week. We're like, Let's, let, let us have this gallery be closed before we talk about anything else. Yeah. So we're excited to kind of hop on the Zoom with her. And then one of the veterans actually said that his, um, his he has a person who's interested in doing this kind of work through the government, I think. And he, and he was like, that's a great thing because they'll pay for everything and, you know, you travel with it or whatever. Um, yeah. He was like, you might have to quit your job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
if that picks up. So we're, we're excited and hopeful. This is the beginning, you know. All you have to do is step out on faith and start. Mm. So once you start, then it's like it's an uphill, uphill battle. Yeah, those are some motivating words for yeah. anyone. Just start. Just start doing it. Yep. So that that's the advice you'd not. give for anyone looking to go into either one of these two mediums, photography yeah, or is, fashion. It was interesting when this gallery opened, they had like a meet and greet with the mayor and some city councilmen, yeah. and so I had some photography up, and he was at work, and I called him. I was like, "You have to come over, bring some of your pieces down." He was like, "They're not." I just like I was like just bring them down, say it's a demo piece, and just tell your story. <laughs> yeah, okay. I was like the story's the only important part, yeah. and so he did, and they were like, oh my god, and they loved it. Yeah. Um, and then that from there, then we got the gallery space. We had June set, and that was February, so we had yeah. from February to June to figure it out yeah. <laughs> and put um, our yeah. two like our two talent houses together to um, come up with something military inspired. Yeah, that's dope. So that was. Working under pressure somewhat, right? Yeah, a little bit, yeah, yeah. Come full, right? full day of work and then sewing at night. And two year old. Two year old, yeah, we're new parents. Oh, we're wow. Pandemic baby. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So. That's some dedication. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Most, I mean, most art has those kind of stories, right? Where you're like, yeah. <laughs> working at 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, man. Get back up and do it all over again, man. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I am the love, love of the art. Yeah. Love of the art, because you got a story to tell. I feel like when you when you when it's put on you to tell a story, mm -hmm. do whatever you're doing, then it's something that's got to be done because there are people out there waiting on you to tell your story. Yeah. You never know who. In other words, let me say, you never know who's waiting on you to tell your story. Yeah. Well, and, and how it will impact them. How it will impact them. Yeah. You never you can save so a life. Transparent. Yeah. Yes. Yep. How can the people reach out to you if they want to get in contact? Yes. So you can go right now to. The Harris Collective info. So HTTP, um, the Harris Collective info, and we'll update um, where we'll be next or how you can come. We're open for one more weekend, the 24th and 25th. So we're open all of June on the weekends. Um, so come on down. We're in Carson. Um, Bit.ly backslash Harris Collective Exhibit is how you can RSVP. Um, or you can just follow me on Nikita Kalam at Instagram, and I post like all the time about what we're doing in here. Yeah. No, oh, perfect. Thank you for your time. Appreciate Thanks for you. Having Thank, us. You. Thank, you. Thank you. This piece I have, um, I have done this for the exhibit, but this piece I just took two pockets off of a pair of jeans I had, old jeans. I took the, um, the legs off and put it. This is short sleeve originally. I just wanted to make it kind of give it a flare look on the sleeves. And I just opened it up and put some old denim in the, um, to open it up and make it wider, kind of give it a flare look. And then, of course, I did the same like everything else. I repeated the, uh, the logo, rod and repeat, with the military uh, flag on and then on the back. I found a guy who makes the, uh, makes the tiger with the sun, which, is, which to me just gives it more of an artistic look or feel to it more so. So I just kind of think I wanted to up. Uh, bring it up to those, to that tiger. Which and why? On the rock, tiger on the rock. This means a little more to me, I think. It just kind of, I think it adds to the piece more in depth. Yeah. Why the and tiger, really though? Why the tiger? The tiger represents courage. Mm -hmm. Courage and strength on each piece. So that's why I, that's why I stick with the tiger. So all my pieces, I'll, I'll have a tiger on the back of it. Yeah, it makes it a little more powerful. Yes, for... yes. It makes it stay more powerful. Yeah, yeah. And then why, why the... The discolored uh, flag instead well, of keeping. Okay. Well, well, the, dis the discolored flag <laughs> for me, I feel um, my my. Just to give you a little story, my great grandmother, uh, she was raped by the Ku Klux Klan many times. And when I heard this story, I was like, man, you know, growing up, you know, being from the South, I experienced a whole lot of like being called out my name, and you know, it's just something in the South where my wife grew up in L.A. A little different. So, you know, I, I know firsthand, not what my mother and my generations back went through, but it's just, for me, I feel like I'm in a country and I have a lot of freedoms more than a lot of countries, so I'm thankful for that, but I just feel like there's a lot of things that we can't improve on to be as a cohesive unit of people that we were meant to be, whether whatever color we may be, so I just felt like I wanted to just keep it neutral with the camouflage color on, then, you know, I mean, yeah, I just want to keep it neutral on that, on that aspect of it. So, yeah, I just feel like the U.S. could do a little better with as a collab with um, 
as a people. So as that's people that's your interpretation that the flag isn't measuring up to what it's supposed to be. I feel as like of I now. Feel, yeah, yeah. It's would like, I sum it up? Would that sum it up? I I I I I, I want to say that the I, let me because I don't want to step on any toes in that respect, but I just want to keep it neutral. I will leave it at that. I just want to keep, I'd keep it neutral as a um, keep the conversation, keep the conversation open. open. Yeah, yeah. That's dope. Yeah.